everybody, welcome back to the vlog. I'm so excited that you're joining me because this is a really important topic. So today we are talking about things you need to go before you go and see a cancer specialist like me. It could be any specialist. It could be like my husband, if you've watched some of the other videos, he's a board certified internist. Maybe you're seeing a cardiologist or an ophthalmologist or a neurologist. There's lots of specialists in veterinary medicine. And this could also be things that you're gonna apply when you're gonna see your veterinarian. Because guys, let's be honest, it's really overwhelming when we take our pets to the veterinarian. Again, whether they're a general practitioner or a specialist. Often we have our pets with us, we're worried, we're concerned, um, there's a lot of distractions going on. So I've seen thousands of patients in my 20 plus years in veterinary medicine, and I'll be honest, a lot of mistakes. So I hope that you'll find this helpful. Let's dive in, let's do it, let's figure out how to make this appointment great for everybody. super, super important when you're booking that appointment to see me or another specialist, make sure that you tell us all the places that you have been to. So if you if you have multiple specialists, so like Ollie, one of my patients has a cardiologist, a general practitioner, and a couple of other specialists. So make sure we have all the names of the places that you've taken your pet so we can get all of the medical records. I want to make sure especially that I have current blood work current imaging like chest x-rays and ultrasound and current cytology and biopsy reports if you're booking your appointment and then you're going to have surgery i need to make sure that i call that place and get that biopsy report because that's so important when you come see me so oncologists really need current cytology and biopsy reports at the appointment so again if it's happening between the time you've booked the appointment and seeing me someone's gonna to need to call that hospital and ask for those reports. So those are gonna be really important things. When you get a call to confirm, or you're calling one or two days before, make sure all those medical records are received at my hospital. That's gonna really help me help you and be efficient when you check in the day of the appointment. And that's what this is all about, helping you get the best care for your pet. My next tip is know what medications your pet is on. It is not okay to just tell us the appetite stimulant, the pain medication. It's in my pet's medical record. Maybe you were prescribed and then you finished it. So we need to know what medication. So you know what? Write it down, take a screenshot, uh, take some pictures of the medications before you go in and know how many pills or how much you have left so we can refill it for you. We wanna make it as easy as possible. Another good tip guys, when you're going to see the specialist is to write down your questions before you go. Doesn't mean you can't come up with questions while you're there, but you're gonna be overwhelmed when you get there. You're gonna have your dog, your cat with you. So a really good idea is to write down your questions. You can jot them in your smartphone on a piece of paper and don't forget to bring them, but write down your questions before you get there. Another tip, if at all possible, is to bring a friend or a family member with you. It's always wonderful to have emotional support and an extra set of ears. Take notes. Somehow you need to record this information, whether you like to write it down, bring a notepad. Me, I'm a journal. So I have my, my journal. This is my daily journal, my calendar. It has a note section in the back so I can write notes there because I'm gonna have that with me. Another great tip is most smartphones have a voice memo section. I, I actually suggest to my clients that they record my conversation for a couple of reasons. They can listen to it again. There's so much information to absorb. I can probably say the same thing twice to a client and they're gonna hear different parts of the conversation because it is so overwhelming when your pet is diagnosed with cancer and you're trying to absorb all the information, even under the best circumstances, quiet room, pet's not there, maybe no kids in the room. And we often have lots of distractions in the exam room when you go in and you're upset and emotional. So again, if you can record the conversation on your smartphone, take some notes if you want, you can go back when you're home and listen to it. So ask your specialist, is it okay if I record it? I actually suggest that, because that's another great way, maybe if another family member, friend can't be there, they can play that. One of my lymphoma patients, Dakota, 
I said, is there someone who can't be here today? And he said, my partner's not interested in treating Dakota for lymphoma. And I said, well, how about we record the conversation? And he said, Meh, I don't think it's gonna matter. We recorded the conversation and he played it back for his partner. And a couple of days later, he came back and we started treatment for Dakota. And she's now out over a year and a half. She went through her CHOP multi-agent chemotherapy protocol, went into remission. She's a statistics buster, so first remission survival times are usually about a year, and she's doing great, and he's really, really happy that we recorded that conversation because it allowed him to share it with his partner who couldn't come to the initial consultation, and he said that really worked because he listened to it and was less scared with chemotherapy and the whole process. Another thing I like to do is conference call maybe somebody who can't come to the call, uh, you know, people work, it's hard to get everybody to an appointment. So often I'll say, do we want a conference call somebody in and still record the conversation? So that's other good tips for that first appointment. So you can listen to the information again and again, if you want. Uh, I also suggest my YouTube videos often have a lot of the similar information for the common cancers. So that would be another good way to be able to listen to the information again. So another tip I have when you're going to see the specialist is be prepared to do diagnostics, do tests, or treat that day. A lot of the times you're taking time off from work, maybe you are driving a couple of hours, and we're not trying to rush you into treating that day, but it's gonna be super helpful if you're prepared to make decisions that day so you don't have to drive back and forth, take more time off from work. So it's a good idea to have an idea of what you wanna do. So you don't have to do stuff that day, but it does always frustrate me when clients come down and they're not prepared to make decisions that day. So again, try to have an idea of what you wanna do. And with that said, a lot of the times, pet owners don't want to fast. They say, why can't I feed my pet that day? And then they get to see me and we want to do ultrasounds, which are always better when they're on a fast, when the pet has been fasted because there's no food going through the intestines. Or we want to do a CT scan, which requires anesthesia. And they just had breakfast or they just had some food an hour or two ago. And so we don't want them to vomit and regurgitate or aspirate during anesthesia. So that is the reason that we will often tell you to go ahead and fast just in case we're going to do CT scans, ultrasounds. And then if we decide not to, you can go ahead and feed them while we're here and we'll give them treats while we're here. So again, that's the reason we will often tell you to fast your pet because we don't know exactly what they're going to need until we get here. So it's a good idea to be open-minded about doing diagnostics and being able to treat that day. Because again, you may have driven a couple hours with your pet, taken time off from work, maybe got a babysitter. So it's a good idea to be prepared to make decisions and get going that day. If you need a couple of days, a week to think about it, depending on the cancer, that's okay, but let's keep an open mind about it. So unfortunately, treating cancer is not inexpensive in dogs and cats, so I think it's really important to think about how we're going to pay for our pet's care. And it's important to think about that before we get there because often, again, you've taken time off from work out of our lives to get there. And so often, you know, chest x-rays, ultrasound, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, we're talking thousands of dollars. So I think you want to think about that before you go see the doctor. You don't have to do anything. I always tell people, if you're not sure what you want to do, just come see me and you'll pay for the initial consultation. Go see a specialist and you can collect all that information. We can't can't, you can't call me, you can't call a specialist and get an estimate over the phone or what we call a treatment plan over the phone because we haven't met you and your pet and we don't know exactly what they need. So you can definitely go in and just meet them, pay for the consultation, and find out how much you know your pet's care is going to cost. But it's helpful if you wanna move things along and get as much done on the first day that you're prepared to think about how much chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation can cost. And we're typically, depending on the part of the country that you're in, a couple of thousand dollars for surgery. Chemotherapy can be three to five to $10,000, again, depending on the cancer, the size of your pet, costs more money to treat a Great Dane or a Golden Retriever than a Chihuahua because it's based on weight. Um, 
and how long their chemotherapy protocol is gonna be. So you wanna start thinking about the finances. So maybe you need to think about care credit, which is gonna be a credit card for your dog. And you can actually apply for that online before you go see the specialist. Um, you know, it would be a good time to think about before your pet has cancer about pet insurance because that's going to be super helpful. I'm always very happy when my clients tell me they have insurance for their pets because that removes that pressure about payment for their pets. Obviously, different insurance plans are going to give us different, you know, abilities to cover different parts of their cancer treatment. But again, that's going to be so we want to think about care credit or other payment plans like that, pet insurance, or even just securing other forms of payment, you know, or just thinking about the finances and how that's gonna fit into your family's financial situation. So as you're wrapping up your initial consultation with your specialist, whether you've just done an initial consultation and you're in that information collection period, or you've done some diagnostics and you're waiting for results, or you started treatment, at the end of that first appointment, you need to know what is your action step? What is the next thing you need to do? Maybe you need to see a surgeon to make an appointment for surgery. Maybe you're coming back for chemotherapy. Maybe when you went in, your biggest concern was my pet won't eat. So are you leaving with medications that address appetite? Is your pet painful? Are you leaving with pain medications? So again, what were your concerns when you were going in? And do you, were those concerns addressed? And do you know what your next action step is? So that's it. I hope you found it helpful. You know, please let me know what was your favorite tip? What is the thing that's gonna help you the most when you go see a specialist? So drop it in the comments below. Did I forget anything? Drop it in the comments below. And so you don't miss another episode, please subscribe, share this with your friends. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I hope you found it helpful and I hope to see you again at the next episode.